Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're well, I hope you're safe, I hope you're keeping it together and having some fun, because it's nice to have fun, isn't it? Um, I normally record these all in Norwich, I'm normally there in Norwich. At the moment though, I am in Dartford, um, back in my mum's house in Dartford. Um, I thought it would be nice to record this outside. Um, I thought there was a nice field where I used to, right by my old primary school, literally they share a fence and I thought that would be a nice place to record. Unfortunately, what I didn't counter for was one, that the trains run close nearby, which is actually quite nice for me. I like a bit of atmosphere, hence probably the leaves under my feet. Um, what I didn't properly count for that was destructive was one, the fact that schools are still open. So there was a schoolyard of kids running around making noise, making it hard to record. In fact, you might be able to hear them on and off. I keep hearing sort of distant screams, like, I don't know, distant beasts hunting me, tracking me down, ready to slaughter me. Um... Or they may just be going home to have some um, fish fingers and peas and mash. I'm not sure. I will play the safe card and assume they are trying to hunt me down and slaughter me. Take me to their nest to feed me to their young. Um, you going off topic at all? No, I don't think so. I think this is exactly what I intended to say. I think this is everything I wanted to say. If, in fact, I might have even covered it all. So there we go. Um... That was the first part, anyway. The second reason is that people are just around. There are more people around than I thought they were, including a group of, say, five or six just people who came and stood right next to me and were sort of just watching me while I was recording. Not literally standing and staring like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but they were just there, hanging around and looking up at me a lot understandably because there is a person in a field twizzling around some goalposts who uh, is talking into a little black box so anyway it's meant I've had to record a few times and stop and come back um, but that's where I am and I'm by the train still as you can almost certainly hear um, and I'm just wandering through the leaves and recording this. Um, I do want to give a brief warning before we properly get into what I'm talking about. That this is sort of grief-heavy, mourning, uh, loss. Um, these are the topics being covered. So if you're out and about and you don't fancy listening to this, that's absolutely fine, you know. Either listen to it later or don't listen to it at all, you know. Look after yourself and what you need. If you're not in the right headspace, then just, just you know, this is a good point to duck out, I think. And um, do whatever else you want to do. Maybe help me track down these uh, blood-hungry kids who are trying to rip my uh, innards from me. Away from my outards. Um... So that's that. Uh, so the the reason why it's grief heavy is because uh, this is a Monday today, and on Friday, after a couple of long and short weeks, really, um, my my aunt died. My auntie Sue died. Um, she died from what started out looking as pneumonia and uh, she was taken to the hospital with pneumonia and as it went on a couple of days later we found out because she was in partial isolation as she showed various symptoms of covid like um, uh, one of the main ones that I remember is delirium she had a temperature, that's right, she had a temperature, but she also was quite delirious. Um, and so they um, had to keep her in a separate sort of 
I don't know, like an intermediate ward while they got her test back. And they came back positive when she had COVID. And the reason why that was significant news for her, as it is for really everyone, but in particular her, is because she was someone in the high risk category. Um, I think I already decided beforehand I won't talk, go into her life too much because as, as soon as you start, it just gets deeper and deeper and you start uncovering all this incredible, amazing things. Everyone says when they lose someone that this person, maybe not everyone, that's not fair. People say after people have passed away how remarkable they were and extraordinary and they focus on their good qualities. And that's certainly true for people. But she very genuinely, truly lived a, a, a remarkable incredible existence she really was yeah, incredibly inspirational the things she did and the things she achieved she has a disability from birth um she had arthur arthrogryposis which spawned off a whole other load of things and she lived her life to the absolute fullest in someone in her condition being able to drive and live independently and be a seamstress and do a Duke of Edinburgh award where she had to capsize herself on a boat. And um, as I said, I don't want to talk too much about her life because that's not... I want to do that another point when I'm ready separately because it needs to be told. But I don't... I, people need to know how amazing she was. Um... But because of her condition, um, she was high risk. And as and my mum, who's done a phenomenal job for her whole for her whole life, for my aunt's whole life, and really gave her everything, gave her everything, and and made her really helped in these last eight or nine years after she had an amputation um, my mum made her life incredible and has done everything right and everything she could and all of the absolute top best things she could do to keep her safe from covid but it's the way that covid works i guess is that it's underhand and it's undetectable a lot of the time so she caught it anyway and well, there came a point, really, when we learnt and knew that she was not going to get better. And the end-of-life care team had to come in, the palliative care team. Just before then, it was sort of on the edge, and we weren't. We wanted to go and see her, and we couldn't. And she was unresponsive anyway. And so we thought maybe we could send messages and stuff. And so I tried to send a message. This was on a Monday. I tried to go out again into a small park and record a message. Um, I'm going to play it now, or at least some of it, um, so you can hear it. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's weepy. <laughs> but um, anyway, if here it is. Hi, Auntie Sue. It's, it's Ben here. Um, I'm here with Googie. We we're in our local park, call it Googie Land. We are wandering about. It's about four o'clock as I'm recording this, so the sun is beginning to tip down. So it's beginning to go, uh, beginning to be plunged into a little bit of darkness. Oh, now, got some dog plops happening now, so I've got to tidy up the dog plops. Um, I uh, I just wanted to say that I love you.
Hey, Auntie Sue. How you doing? It's Ben here. I am out on a walk with Googie in our local park. We call it Googie Land. Um, come on. Okay. Hey there, Auntie Sue. It's Ben here. I am just recording you a message while out on a walk with Googie in our local park, the park we go to every day called Googie Land. It's what we call it. It's not what it's actually called. I think it's called <coughs> Park or something like that. Um, anyway, it's called something else like that. Um, the sun's going down, so it's getting a bit... Uh, it's still light, but the darkness is coming ever so creepily and sneakily um i just wanted to send you a message to say i'm not sure if they can play this to you but if they can then i just wanted to say i love you very much and um i hope to see you soon hope to see you very soon and um yeah get well get better and um you know, it's mainly just, I guess, if you wanted to hear my voice, and here it is. Yeah, this is it. Uh, <laughs> this is it. This is my voice. Um, yeah, I love you. And I will see you very soon, I'm sure. Okay. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye. So that was what I recorded for my aunt uh, when I was heartbroken and devastated that something might happen that I didn't want happening to her. So, um, I recorded another message the next day when I pulled myself together that it was a bit, a lot more positive and a lot more together. And so she got to hear that uh, on the Wednesday she got to hear that, which is good. That was played in an iPad. We got it to her. That mixed with Elvis songs as she was... I think you could say too into Elvis. I think that's a fair thing you could say. There is so much. I've got now I've got a little necklace around my neck of a little sparkly guitar uh, with his face on it. Um, that is... I mean, I want it around my neck right now, but it's... It's certainly not... What's the right word? It's got some tackiness to it. It's very tacky. <laughs> but it has to be tacky because that's what she wanted. You know, that's... You got her... I don't know. What do you... What, what's tacky? A plastic dinner plate with Elvis's face on it or a bobbing head Elvis. Little plastic, you know, waving the arms around and the shoulders or anything like that. Um, if you bought it for her as a joke, thinking, I think I found something, she would be, un she would have been unbelievably over the moon. She would have, she'd have been your best friend forever. Anyway. Um, but, as, uh, but we lost her on the Friday, on the Friday morning. Um, there was nothing else they could do. They couldn't, they were wonderful. The NHS and the you know, time... <laughs> that they gave her and the, the space they gave her and everything they did for her was everything they could have done and if they did it all again then they would have done everything they, the same again um, but it wasn't enough um, the reason I wanted to talk about it there's lots of reasons but there's I've been I've I've lost a lot of people in my life in my time um it isn't that long a time I'm 30 and I my nan has died who was very close to us and my dad has died and lots of wonderful people in my life have died um and it certainly hurts a lot in the same way as them, but it's different in lots of ways as well. Lots of ways in how when she, my aunt contracted got pneumonia about three years ago, and she was in a similar situation then. And at that point, 
we could rally around. We could go. I lived in Brighton at the time. I could jump. I ran and I could from work. I got on the train, got on another train, got on a bus, got on the wrong bus <laughs> that took me somewhere else, which meant I had to run up a steep hill in the dark. Um, but we could be there and we could be there as a family and we could be there in the hospital and we were there together. And um, with this, with COVID, um, not just the fact that she had COVID, but in this whole time, we can't go there. We can't be in the hospital and we can't meet up together. And so I heard Brené Brown before. Brené Brown has talked about over-functioning and under-functioning in terms of sort of traumatic events that happen. And I will think I will get them wrong. I wasn't expecting to mention this. So I'm going to do a bastardized version of it. But I think overfunctioning is where you sort of somebody really takes over in a situation and, you know, will go over and beyond what they do. And underfunctioning is someone who, in that sort of situation, will sort of crumble and not know what to do. And they are both, you know, there are both positives and negatives of both, but they are both sort of. Uh, responses in that moment and, they, and it takes time you have to, the, I guess the hope is that you take time to f- find the middle point in which you can properly feel and properly experience and properly get back to where you are that's a really awful version of what that is I think I think I'm an over functioner at some points we've had traumatic experience before and I can take over in that situation I can sort of I can I know I can know who to ring and who to call and who to talk to and how to talk and how to get there and I sort of but in this situation you can't do that you can't do anything I can't, I couldn't do anything I couldn't go and see people I couldn't be in the hospital so you're sort of there with all this energy ready to move ready to go and you can't do anything about it so you're just sort of in fact on the Thursday the day before she died I packed on my bag and I was ready to go and there was all this like I need to do something while crying and while (laughs) even knowing that she wasn't going to live for much longer but I couldn't do anything about it and you just have to sit there and wait for the phone to ring and so you're just sort of living everyday life really this sort of ghostly life experience just trying to get on with everyday things for the past two weeks trying to do things and having to cancel some things and then just I'm very grateful that for my partner for Dolly who has been there for me wonderfully and for our dog Googie who has just been a joy to be around and we could go for walks and that was a massive help a huge help to just have something to do to to go outside and be in nature and to walk and to talk and to be in the air and but other than that there's a lot of waiting and a lot of what feels like life on hold and trying to not knowing what's the best thing to do I found that a very odd experience for sure um just waiting around in the and she's there in the hospital and I just thought maybe she'd get better because there was a distance, I think, in my head at least. This is very personal. I'm sure you could talk to all of my family and they would have different experiences. But I felt like at points she's been in this position plenty of times in her life and she's always fought back. That's what was always incredible about her. But you, something about the normality of having a phone call every now and again and saying this is where we are. Um, and then that's it that's the update for the day and now you've got the other i don't know eight hours of being awake to to do life and to and so i felt a bit it was hard to feel connected to it all the time because it felt so i felt so removed from it partly i guess because you physically are removed you're physically removed from the situation whereas if i could be in hospital and i could be in a different environment around my family seeing them talking to them about her and about the situation you experience it differently, I think. And so just being away and having phones, which are wonderful, and FaceTime, which is lovely, just, it's a whole different thing. Um, COVID really has raised up a few in particular things. Like I remember hearing someone talk, I think it was Russell Brand, talk about how this is, what's interesting about COVID is it's personal and it's global. 
Uh, whereas sometimes you think uh, you hear people in situations and you can empathize or sympathize with them really um but you are in a different situation you i sort of know for a long time we sort of know what it's been like for say somebody in france or someone in italy someone in russia someone in all all over the globe uh you know we we're, we're all inside we're all locked up <laughs> not locked up that's not the right phrase we're all in lockdown we're all having to make sure we self isolate and stay away and there's lots of issues with separation and loneliness and um so we all have that in common and so it's interesting there's the personal and the global but this to me feels like a third kind of experience not just global and not just personal but a very and I don't know how to describe it I don't really know how to talk about it but this is abnormal it feels to be experiencing and going through it this way it feels a different way of I wish I knew how to put it into words really but it feels like a third kind of experience the amount of logistics that are involved in what you'd hope you would be able to focus on emotional things um and it, I mean for me personally it's been all of the talk coming out about vaccinations vaccinations coming and on the one hand that's wonderful that's beautiful and many people's lives will be saved and potentially the loneliness that people will feel and the difficulties that they have they'll be able to um overcome those and um i mean there's too much to talk about in terms of covid and life going back to normal because I have different opinions, maybe not different opinions, I have specific opinions that maybe aren't in the mainstream as such about returning back to normal. But on the other hand, I'm watching people talk about vaccinations and about how they, how they act, um, the, how much they're helping people and cure people. And then there's my aunt in hospital and she, she needs it, you know? She she needed that and and she couldn't have it and I I know it's just serendipitous and it's the way that things work and the timing that happens but it's hard it's hard when you know that there's that potential out there and you just will not be able to reach it in time even with the cures and the vaccinations I still feel like don't let that be the end of it. We know that people who are generally fitter and healthier have a higher chance of survival and of coping with it and getting through it. So as, as wonderful as a vaccine is, don't forget about um, creating systems and things to mobilise people's health and so they can get less stress and better sleep and better living and better connections and everything like that you know because you know those those initiatives to boost people's lives should be present they should be happening now and lots of people say things about governments and i guess i have things to say and it's not about this right now but why not those incentives why not creating those environments where people can live healthier lives and they can choose to live those healthier lives. Uh, so it's an option because for so many people it is simply not an option. Um, um, anyway, <laughs> something else. There's a few things I, I will stop soon because I don't want to go on about this all too long. And the sun is actually going down now. It's now, I think it's gone behind the houses. So I can't quite see it anymore. Uh, so it will get dark very soon, so I'm going to have to go. But I did want to say a few things about grief, because, I mean, I've experienced it in lots of ways, and, I mean, it's so personal. I'd also recommend Griefcast, if anyone hadn't heard it. Chats with comedians, and I think other people as well, from Carrie Ed Lloyd, about grief, about people they've lost, and about all the experiences people have, and there's loads of wonderful conversations in that. Um, I heard a few people before, and now saying to me that they wish they could take the pain away you know i say i wish 
I could take this pain away from you right now. Um, and I, th but I think, and this is maybe just me personally, I think grief is the price you pay for love. And I will always choose love. I will always choose love because this is something that people said a lot when my dad died. Well, it's something I thought, sorry, when my dad died, is every time it hurts and every tear that I cry and every time I get that feeling in the stomach or in the chest of tightness, I think that is another bit of proof to me that this person lived a wonderful and beautiful life in one aspect at least. They lived a very beautiful existence. They touched people that were around them. And so when I get upset and when I cry and when I well up about my aunt and when, like I had to go around her house today, I didn't have to, I wanted to go around her house today and seeing her bed empty and seeing the house empty, it's hard and it hurts. It really hurts. But um, that's the price you pay for the connections that you make in life. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't, I, pain means a lot to me. And although it's pain, you know, pain is, it hurts, pain is painful. I will, in one aspect, um, treasure it because it's proof to me that I loved her. I do want to preface that by saying if you don't feel that, if you're going through something and you're not feeling that, that's absolutely fine. This is very personal to me and maybe it communicates to other people, but grief is so personal and you cannot predict how you feel. So if you don't feel that way, that is not a sign that you don't love them or they didn't mean anything to you or, you know, some people can do certain things. Some people can talk about the person for a long time. Some people shut away. Some people deal with it as healthy as possible. Some people feel as unhealthy as possible. Uh, there's, there's, there is a, a whole color wheel, a whole spectrum of different experiences you can have with it. So if you don't feel that, then that does not mean you're doing it wrong or that you're wrong. Is You um, should be able, I will hope that you could take the time to, uh, what am I saying? What am I saying? Um, to understand that that it's that there isn't a wrong way to do it, and that if you feel a certain way and someone else doesn't feel a certain way, you're not doing it wrong. Um, you're doing it however you need to in that moment, and almost you don't have a choice. I feel like you know, just grab on, hold on to the ride, try to stay as float as best you can, and maybe analyze it afterwards. But just if you feel okay right now as well if you feel okay after someone close to you has died I mean that's fine too you know there's no there's no right or wrong way of doing this if you feel great if you feel fine if you feel like I can go back to work the next day then you go back to work the next day if that's genuinely what you feel you know um, as long as you can give yourself as much space to be open as possible to it you know um, but I'm not in any position to give advice, so I'm not going to start giving advice. One other thing I've noticed, maybe very personal to me, is that this past few days as well, I keep walking around, and the first day, on the Friday, it very much hit me, and it hit me hard, and I was crying a lot. On the Saturday, I was still waiting to see whether I could go to my mum's or not, and life felt a bit on hold, as it has done this past few weeks, and... Um, so there was a kind of surreal aspect and a kind of distance from it, but every now and again I would just talk about it or talk to someone on the phone and maybe mention her in the past tense or see a picture of her, and my face, my, my face would genuinely pull a really deep, confused face, like my eyebrows would come down, my head would tilt, um, and I wasn't, it's not like I was putting it on, I was genuinely, I felt like something inside of me is trying to process this enough that I'm like visibly showing on the outside head cocking and like oh like so something physically inside was trying to process and understand what was happening um anyway I just thought that was a silly little extra thing to say 
Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is that I've also noticed that because we have different relationships with different people, that sometimes I'm talking to somebody and I can feel very open and honest and I can talk to somebody else and, it, and, it's, and it's a lot harder to. And that's okay too, you know? You don't have to be a certain way for everyone. It's very personal, again, but the idea of a friend of mine, I'd say my best friend, uh, well, it depends if you count my partner as my best friend, which I do, but I always think, do you, do you know what I mean? <laughs> There's partners, you know, they're already, they're already, it feels like that goes without saying, do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but a friend of mine said, uh, he was he was leaving me a really beautiful message and at one point he was started to going to say something and he said i was about to say stay strong but this isn't the time to stay strong you don't need to stay strong like let it go be vulnerable and let it be and and i think that's uh true i think that's very lovely and true and um I think I slightly went off topic a bit from what I was saying, but I, um, I, um, ah, what am I saying? Sorry, the sun's going down a bit more and more now, so maybe I should just wrap this up. I'm just saying that uh, you have different experiences with different people and different relations with different people, and if you can't be a certain way with somebody and you can be with somebody else, that's okay too, you know? You have the relationships that you have and then you do what you can do in this moment don't feel guilty or don't feel pressure to have to be something is what i think anyway but what do i know i'm just someone experiencing it that's not the same as knowing how to deal with it is it anyway um if you listen to this thank you very much for listening and i hope there was something in it for you i'm gonna go home now pick up my little box and pick up my water and trudge back I think over a bridge that's what I'm going to do um, be there with my mum and my brother and hopefully see my other brother soon and talk to my partner because I haven't spoken to her today and I need to hear her voice and need to have a conversation with her so I'm going to do that um, yeah thank you for listening and Maybe next week will be something more like what it's been already, but uh, I stay safe and um, remember that we don't have all the time in the world, so enjoy it. Even in the, even with a lot of pain, there's space for joy. <laughs> I, th I think, anyway. I don't want to impose what someone should be feeling or not, but you're all here and you're alive, and uh, and there's happiness to be felt and there's joy to experience. So do it, you know. F ex do what you can to find that as much as you can. Be present, be authentic, um, be loving, be compassionate, be empathetic, be kind, and take care of yourselves. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye.